Hey, what's happening, ladies and gentlemen? Steven Davidson here. Obviously, we're not shaving, but this is shave-related. I've been asked to put them back in, and I figure, why not, for one more time, for at least, well, at least one more time for old sake, for old time's sake, if you will, and I'm going to put my old Tomo Nagura penguins back in here. I got them from Keith Johnson when I placed some orders off of his, uh, Etsy page. I'll put the link to his channel below or Etsy store below. He got a lot of good strops and stones and whatnot. And he's picky about what he sells. So yeah, Team Tomo Nagura in the house. Woo -hoo. Oh, pig one down. Sorry, Waddles and Twaddles. Waddles, Twaddles, Jumbo. <laughs> All right. Today we gonna break in my brand new diamond plates. And for that, let me get some uh, water filled up here. What did I do with Oh, it's still here. <laughs> this is my uh, 220 Gat Super Stone Nagura that I got from uh, SharpeningSupplies.com. I'll put the link to it below. They go from 220 all the way up to 12,000 grit. And it is the Super Stone line. But uh, nonetheless... This is what you do to break in a diamond plate. Even though the Ultra Sharp 2, this is my uh, 1200 grit by the way, so you can see. Even though, um, even though it's pretty smooth, and Ultra Sharp is a fantastic uh, manufacturer and has top shelf quality. Sometimes there could be some debris and loose diamonds on these diamond plates. So it's just best to take any stone you got or you can take an old piece of metal and uh, break it in that way. So that's what we're going to do today. This is a 220 grit. I'll put the link to these below as well. Just take some minutes or two. You only have to do this like two or three times. Also, don't go in the same direction all the time, too. This is my new bevel setting setup right here. Once I get other diamond plates in, I'll continue from there. I already got a 600 grit 6 by 2 inch up here that you've guys seen already in previous videos. caught Ken Surf's video yesterday and he's right he doesn't make a lot of money off his YouTube channel like people think he does people I don't like that troll he mentioned no he doesn't make a whole lot off of there at all in fact let me give you the skinny on that as somebody who's been on YouTube for 13 plus years now you can go and find the date at which my channel started and whatnot. And uh, there's three vehicles pertaining to an exhaust to a 2004 Ford Ranger pickup that I don't have anymore. I end up selling that to my uncle after all my surgeries because I no longer had the power in my left leg from all those surgeries to push the clutch in. That pretty much ruined all the muscle tissue in there and everything and I no longer have the power to drive a five speed in my left leg or the joint for that matter so yeah Ooh, nice nice very nice actually so far so good let's turn it right there do the do it again. 
But uh, yeah, don't quit your day job if you get monetized on YouTube. Unless you're somebody like the NFL, NHL, WWE, somebody like that that has millions of subscribers and you get over like a million uh, views per video, then you'll see a lot of money. And then some off of YouTube from the subscribers. But until you get to that level, you won't see hardly anything. I mean, you have to get like a million views just to see a significant amount to make anything off of it, to consider it income. I mean, I'm going to tell you straight up. I had Google AdSense on a blog I used to do. His blog's still up online. And in the several years that I owned it and done it, it's made me a whopping $7 over the past 13 years. And that was before I switched everything over to wet shade. So yeah, I didn't see nothing off of it. There's no real money to be made unless you get a lot of readers and subscribers on YouTube. And that's the hard part in, itself, in of itself. Um, I'm thankful to have the 605 subscribers that I have now. And I do appreciate all the subscribers you can, that do subscribe and then some. And I've gone out of my way to try to remain demonetized as best I can. Now, YouTube does print videos at random to put ads on, and they've got a couple of mine, mainly due to the entrance music or some kind of reason like that that they make money off of. But uh, there's been no copyright issues or anything like that, but they still pick a video at random to put ads on. That's the only reason you see ads on my channel, period. I'm in the process of uh, demonetizing my uh, podcast because people's already got it hard enough, let alone. And unless they're willing to cut me a check for a significant amount, I will not do any ads. And I don't see that happening either. I just don't have enough traffic to do that. Which is fine. Because I just assume you guys watch me do something. Have fun doing it. With no ads interruption as it is. You already got enough commercial content out there. So, yeah. I do this for fun. I don't do this for a living. I do this for fun. And that's what Ken Sears was trying to say. He does this for fun. He doesn't do it for a living. He does it for fun. Because even though he's monetized, he don't see a whole lot. And what little bit he does see, he puts right back into his channel. He doesn't get free gear, people. That's rare. Point blank, that's rare. Takes care of the twelve hundred bit. Oh yeah. Much smoother now. Yeah. So I feel bad for that troll that commented that uh, he uh, gets a lot of money off his channel when he does it. That's, that's the simple truth. And not only that, just getting monetized is not easy. First, you got to reach 1,000 subscribers. And then, you'll hit this one before you hit the 1,000 subscribers. Then, you got to have so many watch hours, so many hours of people watching your channel. Once you get that and uh, get 1,000 subscribers, then you submit... An application that has to be approved by YouTube. In other words, you can have a thousand subscribers and still not be monetized for whatever reason. You see? 
It's because there's a monetization. This is so smooth. This is the 3000 grit. But uh, just because you submit an application for monetization on your YouTube channel after you meet all their requirements doesn't mean you'll get it. You also got to produce content on a regular basis. You can't just up and quit for about a month or two and then turn right around and, uh, and then turn right around and expect to keep your monetization. Unless there's some circumstances behind it, and you got to prove that too. <laughs> Excuse me. So with that being said, yeah. Then there's another level of monetization. And it's even tougher to get and even harder to keep. Once you reach 10,000 subscribers and over a million watch hours, you get the opportunity to sell merchandise on your YouTube channel, such as t-shirts, coffee cups, stuff like that. You gotta have 10,000 subscribers and a million watch hours. And you gotta have so much sales per month. Mm -mm. If you don't meet those sales for one month, they pull the plug on it. See? YouTube's monetization policy really does suck. Can't go live on YouTube either unless you got a thousand subscribers. A lot of people quit doing YouTube shortly after that. And I don't blame them. You get used to doing something with little to no change, it becomes comfortable. And people expect you to do it, and when you disappear for a little bit, they pitch a fit. Yeah, I've gone out of my way to keep stuff off my channels as best as I could uh, and whatnot. And like I said before, I make a living elsewhere. I'm on disability benefits now because I can no longer work for a living. But if I could work for a living, you probably wouldn't see me much on here. I'd be too busy doing that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. All right, that's the first one. Oh, wow. Even smoother. You almost don't hear it. Yeah, I just need the 2,220 grit, a 600 grit, and... And a 300 grit, and I'll have all, all of them. So yeah, that's my story there. And just because it's monetized doesn't mean they're seeing a lot of money. They're not. Like I said, no, unless you get like a million views per video and have so many. If, I'd say if you got around 50,000 plus subscribers or more and get over a million views per video... Then you'll see some money from YouTube's monetization. But not you still won't see a whole lot. Maybe a hundred or two a month, a couple hundred bucks a month if that. Which can add up, but yeah. So unless you're somebody like the NFL, Major League Baseball, National Hockey League, FIFA, Soccer Association, WWE. AEW or any kind of professional wrestling, uh, the Olympics, uh, NASCAR, and stuff like that, or a podcast like Dale Jr.'s 
dirty media or whatever it is. Uh, that gets a lot of views and whatnot. You will not see more than maybe a hundred to two hundred dollars a month. Once you get to those guys' levels that I just mentioned, you'll see about a million dollars a year, if that. And yes, YouTube does get a cut. So yeah. So, be advised, that's why, if you see uh, ads on a video I've done in the past, it's probably because it's got so many views already, and YouTube picked it at random, out of millions and millions of people that's on their networking platform, respectfully. So, yeah, I don't intend to monetize my uh, YouTube channels at all. In fact... On Buzzsprout, where I uh, launch a lot of my, which I got, by the way, I got 25 downloads now on my podcast. Thank you. But uh, I've got it set to the lowest setting, and it's not even optional to subscribe. In fact, I even put that message in there. If you want to subscribe to it, you can. Three dollars a month. <laughs> See, that's pretty much the lowest setting I could go on there. <coughs> Excuse me. And I don't even care if you subscribe or not. I just prefer you to listen and uh, enjoy yourselves and have a good time. Crisscross circles and the opposite directions and everything. Kind of get broke in as much as possible. The 1200 grit doesn't take as long as this one, and this one's done now, I'm sure, too. Mom's doing good health wise, for those wondering. Uh, she is scared. She says she's nervous, but I believe she's scared. And I don't blame her. I'd be scared. In fact, I was when I was scared. I was scared 12 years ago uh, when I got diagnosed and had to have surgery to get rid of cancer. What I didn't know is I thought it was just going to be one. No. In my case, it led to three in all in less than a month. I'm glad they did the third one, though, because if they didn't do the third one, I would have lost my left leg. It wasn't healing up right after the surgery. And I still got to do deal with something called lymphedema, which is swelling and uh, circulation issues because my lymph nodes in my left leg are not quite right after the surgery. Don't let anybody fool you. Uh, when you have surgery, ladies and gentlemen, you don't recover. If they say you make a re full recovery, that's BS. Because I still feel the effects of mine to this day, 12 years later. In fact, it'll be 12 years the 18th. So, and it'll also be 12 years since I quit smoking. I do not regret that. My gosh. That stuff costs a million. That stuff costs a lot of money these days. But, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. I'll be back soon to do a honing vlog here shortly, so. It'll probably be my next video. Yeah, here we go. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys again real soon. Take care. See here. Take care of yourselves and each other, and God bless all of you. Later, ladies and gentlemen.